Empowered people make informed decisions that lead to living a life without regret. This is Sarah Kaki and Shauna Woods from Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and this is the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. Welcome to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. This is attorney Sarah Kaki with Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and I'm joined by Shauna Woods. The title of today's episode is Alone But Not Lonely, and I absolutely love this because It is actually one of the highest values that I place on my parenting initiatives for my children. I find it so important to teach my children how to be okay with being alone without feeling lonely. So, Shauna, let's break it down a little bit. Okay. So, just let's do our thing. Lonely. Definition of lonely. Well, that's an emotion. Yes. Right. Lonely is an emotion and it's an absence of a relationship. We're an absence of friendships. Right. It is the being without something that you desire. And alone is just a state of being on your own, it's being by yourself. Being. It's just a physical being. And so much of what we talk about is attaching meaning to things, right? Uh-huh. And for instance, if something bad happens, like let's say you don't get the job you wanted. Right. And you're like, oh, my God, I am destitute. I am going to go broke. Well, no, that's just the meaning you attach to not getting the job you wanted. And I believe that lonely is just the meaning you can attach to being alone. But it doesn't have to be the truth. You can be alone and actually not feel lonely. To you, what does that look like when you talk about being alone but not feeling lonely? You know, and for me, it's, it can be in many different ways. I, in particular, very much enjoy being alone. I get energy from shutting down, being alone, kind of wiping my world clean and just sitting there in my, with my own thoughts. So I get energy from it. There are actually times when I can be lonely in a group of people. 100%. And it's about what are you connecting to? Right. When I'm alone, right, for the most part, I am connecting to a part of me that no one else gets to see. Right. Right. I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm doing things. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm laying on my couch just doing nothing, Mm -hmm. but I'm recharging. Right. I'm not missing anything when I'm alone like that. And I think that's a difference between personality types. Right. I've jokingly said this before that I am the most introverted extrovert you're ever going to meet (laughs) because I do enjoy people and I do love, you know, what we do and I do enjoy helping people, but I get my boost of energy. I get my restoration from most of the time just being alone. I need to take alone walks or something like that. Other people, I have a very dear friend, She needs to be around people all the time. Mm -hmm. That's how she gets charged. So if she's alone, she may feel that absence. So she's a natural extrovert, but do you think that this person would feel lonely if they were alone? Or is it just a matter of how much time they would be left alone? I think it's probably about how much time they would would be left alone. Um, Constantly... People who need that kind of interaction constantly seek it out. They know what they need. And if there's not a lot of people around or if they can't make that connection, then I do think they feel the loneliness part of it a lot more. And I do think, however, my definition of a true lonely person is that they want a connection with one particular person Mm -hmm. and they can't have it. And that's what makes them lonely. Right. That's what makes them desire something that's not there. You know, I moved here to the United States when I was 13 and didn't speak that language very well. So I have definitely been through times in my life where I was alone, not by choice. Mm -hmm. And that can feel lonely Mm -hmm. when you're alone, not by choice. And there's many times in my life that I choose to be alone because like you, I recharge a lot when I'm alone and I love being by myself. I have love to like give some space for my thoughts and my ideas and my visions and my time with my faith just to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. And that find that in that alone time. But I think that when it's by choice, 
that's where the difference is when you're feeling like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this, I'm recharging from this. But if you are left alone and, and you're bidding out for connection and it's not being received, that's when loneliness steps in, right? And that's becomes difficult. And the reason I find this to be such a valuable sort of concept for my children to grab, hold on to mm -hmm. with being okay with being alone and not feeling lonely when they're alone mm -hmm. is that exact thing you said, if you are mixed with people that either don't serve you or they're not the right mixture of people for you to grow with or for you to help grow or they're not the ones that you can truly connect with. Nothing can feel more lonely being in a group of people that you're not supposed to be with. That's a, that's a, so for growing children, I think that that's something I really want them to have is don't just fill empty space just to fill it, be intentional about it, be purposeful about it. At the end of the day, you are better off being on your own and giving some time and space of discovering yourself until you're just quickly attaching yourself to other people and adapting to make those relationships or those friendships that aren't healthy for you work in order to avoid feeling lonely. I mean, and, that, and I think the other part of it is there's a huge piece of positive self-esteem with being comfortable with being alone. I find that a lot of people who run away from ever being in, in a situation where they're alone, there is a bit of a self-esteem issue. There's a bit of a being uncomfortable with oneself issue. Whereas you see people who are able to have a lunch on their own, travel on their own, which both you and I are comfortable doing all these things. A lot. A lot. Um, and we're, you know, just having a whole weekend just to themselves, all on their own, not trying to constantly reach out to anybody to fill it with. There's a higher level of comfort with oneself and sitting with oneself and all of our flaws and goods and bads. And then the result of it is a higher level of authenticity, which then gives you the ultimate connection. Because at the end of the day, humans, we are here to serve whatever purpose it is we're here to serve or where, whatever spiritual purpose we have here that's brought us here. I truly believe we're here to serve it through other people or serve it together in, a, in, in communities with other one yes. other person or in groups. I think that's why we're placed here as a whole species. And no matter what has happened throughout history, we've created communities together and bonds together because I truly believe that our spiritual purposes are meant to be experienced through each other. Now, so we do have a deep need for connection and we do have a deep need for love. That's a very, I think, basic human need. But the highest form of it is the one that is true love and not just being nice for the sake of being nice, not just tolerating something from fear of being lonely. It's truly from a place of vision of love versus fear of being alone. Or just having someone there so just, that you're not physically alone because you think that's what's going to chase away your loneliness. Absolutely. And I think so many people don't recognize that. And then what you just said is it is not a fault of humankind that we desire relationships. It is not a fault. It's a beauty. It's an absolutely powerful thing about us. It's love is the quintessential thing. I think that we are here for is to form these bonds and relationships. And like you said, grow something, do something, learn something. The loneliness, right, comes from wanting something you don't or cannot have. Right. And I think too many people set themselves up for loneliness by jumping from relationship to relationship because yes. they're so afraid of their own voice. They're uncomfortable with themselves. They're uncomfortable with themselves because if they sit down and really think through a lot of the things they were doing, it may be because it was for the purpose of being with someone else, for the purpose of becoming. Again, I know I've mentioned this before on a podcast, but Julia Roberts in Runaway Bride, mm -hmm. she was an extrinsically lonely person. She was never alone. She was always with her next mate. Right. 
never alone. And if you look at that movie, I think it's really beautiful ending. I know it's trite and it's a rom-com, but I really do love it. The end of the movie, when she finally does meet the person that she's supposed to be with and they get married, they do it up on a mountaintop alone, away from everybody mm -hmm. so that they could figure out, you know, it was the two of them. Right. right. And I think it's so very important that you're teaching your kids this because I think that's where it stems from and where it starts. You and I grew up in different ways than most people, uh, different ways from each other, but different ways from most people. And our aloneness taught us self-reliance. It taught us, you know, how to get from this place that we don't want to be to that place that we really do want to be. Right. Right. And even as a child, I felt lonely in a lot of senses because I didn't believe everything everybody else was believing. Right. So that made me feel extremely lonely. Which you weren't, but you weren't actually alone. I was not But alone. feeling very lonely. But feeling very lonely. And now that I look back on it, and Sarah and I always joke this was a therapy session for one of us. But now that I look back on it, my running away to the library and my going, I had a closet where I would go read all my books. Yes. That was my way of shutting out the loneliness. Right. I wasn't lonely when I was alone. I was alone when I was with them and we didn't get each other. And I think that is the crux of a lot of relationships. You know, Alison Armstrong says that you will never have a relationship that is better than the one you have with yourself. I just love that. Right? That sentence, I think, is packed, absolutely packed with knowledge. But that's really what we're talking about, is if you can be comfortable with being alone without feeling lonely, then that relationship that you're meant to have with yourself that makes you feel comfortable with yourself and find your most authentic version of yourself and be honest with that version of yourself, then you can show up in other relationships and be honest and authentic and be a giver of true love in these relationships and get that back and receive that back. Yeah. And then whether you're in any situation, you shouldn't feel lonely. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. If you'd like to learn more, go to atlantadivorcelawgroup.com forward slash resources.